Hey everyone, here's a complete step-by-step -step video of how to clean a pompano and get it ready for sushi and sashimi. Pompano is probably one of my favorite fish to eat of all time. I mean, it's extremely fatty and packed with a lot of flavor. It just melts in your mouth. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut around the collar and try to get as much meat as I can uh, onto the fillet. And notice I'm cutting behind the fin from top to bottom. Again, behind the fin. And I'm actually cutting at an angle, so I'm going down about 45 degrees. That way I get more meat on, on the fillets. And here I'm just going to run my knife. Um, through the belly and I'm careful not to go too far deep I don't want to puncture the guts in the stomach and get all that uh, nasty stuff onto the meat if you notice um, the yellow sack in there that's actually a fish roll uh, if you want you can save that and put some salt and pepper and, and drench it in flour and uh, pan fry it's actually really good it's it's sweet uh, it's very rich in flavor um, it's, it's something that I look forward to every time I, I catch these things. And if you did this correct, you'll notice that the intestine and head is still attached. Okay, so the next step is actually quite crucial. You want to take your blade and run it inside where the dark cavity is. Um, that's actually the, the dry blood and that needs to be removed um, that way when you flay the fish later on uh, the meat's going to have a much better finish to it and here after I make the slit I'm just taking my finger and I'm, I'm scraping that underwater that helps remove all that uh, blood out um, some people actually use a toothbrush or um, or chopsticks and you can just scrub 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 and get as much of that stuff out as you can okay so now it's time to fillet um, I have the fish belly up, um, the head section on the right, and I'm just going to make a line um, from the head to, to the end of the tail. This is pretty standard in any flaying job. Okay, so I'm going to run my knife through the fillet again, and I'm getting uh, as close as I can to the uh, to the backbone, I actually fall in just right above the backbone. Um, that way I don't waste any meat. So take your time, do it slow. Okay, and now I'm at the hump where the middle of the spine is. I'm running my knife over the hump. So for this fillet, I'm gonna run my knife top of the rib cage, I'm going to go around it. You can cut through the rib cage if you want, uh, but this is a little bit easier for me and save some time. Okay, so that fillet is almost boneless. And you notice that this fillet is very nice and clean, there's no bruises, no red marks, nothing. Beautiful meat. If you notice, uh, there is not much meat on there. I can run my my knife uh, on top of the spine. I can hear it click, 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 and that's what you want. So next, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Again, I'm gonna run my blade right on top of the the fin, uh, making the score first. And here I'm going to do the same thing to the belly side. 
okay. Now this step is a little bit different than uh, what most other people do, but I actually like to fillet it with the bone side up. And I, I, I curve my knife upwards and follow right along the, uh, the, the bone there. That way, for me, I can get as close as I can um, and not waste too much meat on the, on the bones. You don't have to do it this way if you don't want to. Um, for me, it's just some, something I've been doing for a long time, and uh, it's actually quite easy for me. And another thing to point out is that this way works pretty well for snapper or grouper because their meat tend to be soft there. Uh, so by filling it this way, you won't break the meat up too much. So for the second fillet, you'll notice I left the rib cage on there. Again, it doesn't matter. You can leave it on there or take it off, uh, whichever is easier for you. Uh, later on in the video, I'll show you how to remove the, the rib cage um, if you decide to leave it on the fillet. Okay, so if you notice that hump, uh, that's, that's the spine, and that actually rises up by about half a centimeter. So if you were to run your knife straight across the fillet, you're going to ride the right top of the hump and you're not going to get much meat. Um, it's going to be quite a waste. So the way I did it really maximize uh, your fillets. So this side has the rib cage on there and this is one way to remove it. I'm just running the, the edge of my blade um, as close as I can to the bones. Okay, there you go. If you notice, I, I left a little bit on there. That's okay, I can take that out at the end. And usually at this point, you wanna run your finger along the, the belly, make sure there's no other bones that stuck on there. So here I'm gonna remove the center part of that fillet. Um, there's actually a little bunch of pin bones that runs down about halfway, and that's something you definitely want to take out. If you notice, I didn't cut directly in the center. I cut uh, on one side, then the other side. That way I keep all the pin bones in the middle. So next you want to take the skin off and do this as slow as you can. Uh, basically, you want to uh, keep the blade uh, pretty close, almost parallel to the cutting board, and just go up and down. And there you go. And if you notice, I left a little bit of meat on there because the bottom part of that skin is uh, is dark red meat, and it's a little bit fishy. So I try to leave uh, as much of that red uh, meat on there as I can. So next I'm gonna clean up this fillet a little bit. I'm gonna try to take off some of that red meat that's stuck on there. All right, so this piece is pretty much ready. Um, here I'm gonna cut it into sashimi pieces. If you notice, um, I'm gonna hold the knife at an angle probably about a 15 to 20 degree angle. I'm gonna slice it uh, from top to bottom. There's no need to um, to saw the, the, the fish fillet, so you don't have to. Uh, if your knife is sharp enough, you can do this uh, relatively easy. Um, just one slow slice, one at a time. So that right there is probably gonna cost you about uh, five or six bucks at a sushi restaurant. Okay, so the second piece here is the belly part. 
and I'm going to use this to make it into sushi pieces. Um, the reason because uh, this part is a bit wider and thinner, so it's uh, it's a better use for making um, nigiris out of it. If you notice, I'm holding the the fish piece like that. I want it to bend a little bit around my finger. If your piece is not bending, then you cut it too thick. So for this piece, I end up getting about six pieces. Now, if you cut it even thinner, you can probably get seven or eight. Um, but I, I don't like it that way. To me, I want a little bit of thickness in my uh, sushi. I like the texture. Um, it's just so much better. And here's another piece I'm doing sashimi. And at this point, you're pretty much done. Um, if you want, you can get some shredded daikon or uh, carrot and maybe some endives and uh, put it on a plate, make it really pretty. Uh, it's totally up to you. Um, for me, I like it simple. And these are the uh, sushi pieces from earlier. And here's I have some uh, sushi rice that I made already. And uh, I'm going to make another video at a different time uh, showing you guys how to make the sushi rice. So I got into about the size of a golf ball, maybe a little bit smaller. Okay, you want to get that rice nice and firm, but not too hard. And get a little bit of wasabi, dab it right on there. All right, so get the rice on the fish like that. Try to make a little triangle, flip it over. So you want to squeeze the top and then the side, squeeze the top a little bit, then the side, squeeze the top a little bit, then the side. There you go. Okay, I know that's a little bit hard to do, so I'm going to show you guys again. Okay, get your rice ball ready, put it on top, make a little triangle, flip it over. Squeeze the top, the side, the top again, and then the side, top again, and then the side, okay? And I know that's a little bit hard to do, especially uh, for your first time, so um, later on I'm going to make a separate video uh, just showing you guys how to make the nigiri.